Hi there, everybody. I'm John Mancini. I'm with Jennifer Javier from Oracle, and we're here to talk a little bit about the upcoming MER conference. It's called the MER Immerse event. I'm putting some of the information on the screen right now about the event, and it's going to be focused on auto classification. And it's basically an entire day focused on sort of the realities and, and actually getting over the hype of auto class and actually putting it to work. And so, Jennifer, it's really terrific to have you here today. And give me a tiny bit of your background and how you came to be uh, knowledgeable and interested in auto class and uh, kind of your interesting background as both an HR-ish person and a systems person. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm uh, happy to be here. I uh, am so thrilled to be able to participate in this conference. So I am from Oracle and I'm a director in our HR mergers and acquisitions organization. I run a deal operations and systems team. My background is in HR, but I over the years have really gotten involved in systems. I've created automated systems for our uh, mergers processes. And what I think is um, you know, pretty key here is that looking at the auto classification part of this journey, that's a gap that I have in our te HR technology stack. And uh, so when I was introduced to this project, I signed up right away. And so um, as you think about this, what, what do you see as the most important benefits that an auto classification strategy can bring to the kind of work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Our biggest challenge is with our mergers at Oracle, we have acquired over 140 companies and those 140 companies, we have taken on all of their HR content, even payroll, um, finance, I mean, you name it. And so the biggest challenge is, is when we have a, a litigated case or an audit or an HR request, we're looking through a sea of content that we're not familiar with. It was their companies, all of the intellectual property is gone. So where I think the benefit of this is having technology to classify the content, be able to search for the content quickly, and also then be able to assign a retention period to it. Right now, I retain everything forever. And <laughs> uh, I'd like to be able to uh, work with our legal department and get the approval to, to do destruction per our policies that we have. So um, that's really some of the, like, the benefits and challenges that I see. Yeah, that, that's interesting. You have kind of um, two sets of challenges. One is that Oracle does a lot of mergers and acquisitions, and this technology is particularly germane in that area. But, you know, there's also the challenge, particularly with HR content, you know, there's a lot of vulnerability there in organizations. And um, so that's, that's a really interesting duality there. Um, as, as you think about this, um, what hurdles have you encountered as you start to talk about this? So because we have inherited so much content, it's been, uh, it's not organized. It's, uh, you know, it, it literally is a lift and shift over. Um, so one of the biggest hurdles is understanding what we have and what we don't have. And the what we don't have is the hardest part because you cannot, um, you can't produce something that you you don't, don't have. know where it is. <laughs> and so the system or auto classification gives you that confidence to say, I've searched, I've, I, I've looked in every needle in a haystack and a human doing that, it, it would take hours. Uh, auto classification, it takes minutes. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point because it's, it's one thing to think about the risk associated with what you know you have. And, but then you think about sort of the risk and value of what you don't know you have <laughs> and what you can't find. And uh, that's, I think, where nobody has the time to go back and figure that out years after the event um, to classify and tag that stuff afterwards. And so you got to figure out some way to let technology help you with that. If, yes. you, if you were, if you were uh, thinking about, uh, you know, based on where you've been, you know, one particular piece of advice that you would give to people looking at this, um, what would that be? 
My biggest piece of advice, I, I really appreciate the relationship that I have with our records management team and legal. I, uh, and is most likely, you know, why we've embarked on this journey together. Uh, I feel very supported uh, from uh, records and from a line of business perspective that they're developing or providing me a solution that I can, uh, that can actually, uh, you know, fit my business challenges, being able to search in all of the content very efficiently um, and having a system do that with, with the level of accuracy that I currently don't have. So I would say, organize your content, um, think about who are the decision makers, who are the people, who are the people that you need to have the relationships with to like, to get the project moving forward. And once you have their ear, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to take your policy practice, the legal piece of it, the, um, the exposure that you can have because of the sensitive nature of the content. It's easy to, uh, I would say then move to this auto classification decision as long as you have, you know, all of the, the right stakeholders on board. So one last question, uh, totally out of left field, because you said that you were both kind of an HR perspective as well as a systems perspective. Um, we're both sitting in our virtual offices right now um, as a result of COVID. What's your take on, on how work is going to change or what, what's, what's a good, what are things going to be like in six months? I, uh, that's a great question. I really feel that COVID has actually taught us that we can be productive wherever we are, behind a screen, in our closets, in our bedroom, <laughs> on the beach, uh, and that it really is, uh, it's something where I see in my employees, uh, we've worked virtual for years, that you give employees some freedom to choose how they want to work, and they will give you back tenfold. It, I, I've seen it um, for years. I've been working from home uh, for 15 years, very productively. And so I hope post COVID that this stays, that employees have a choice is, is really, um, you know, my thought that this uh, COVID, you know, there's all silver linings in COVID. And I definitely, from a work perspective, this is a, a for sure a silver lining. It's freedom to work wherever you have. It's, it's the modern work world. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. It's really been a pleasure talking to you. And on behalf of the MER Conference and the MER Immerse event that's coming up on January 27th, look forward to seeing you there. And thanks again for the time. Appreciate it. You're welcome. 